Welcome, curious minds. Today, we'll explore the Greenway House, which belonged to the best-selling British novelist of all time, Agatha Christie. She is known for her 66 detective novels, 14 short story collections, and the world's longest-running play, The Mousetrap. Her books, outsold only by the Bible and Shakespeare, have sold over 100 million copies and been translated into 100 languages. Agatha Christie, the world-renowned mystery and detective novelist, had a profound connection with her holiday home, Greenway House, which offered her a private retreat from the public e and served as a source of inspiration for her writings. Located in the English Riviera within the county of Devon, Greenway, holds a special place in the hearts of Christie fans and those fascinated by English literature and history. The three-story estate is located on the meandering River Dart near Galmton in Devon, England. It is two miles from the nearest village, Galmton. Greenway's story started in the late Georgian period, when an affluent 18th-century gentleman, Harris Roop, replaced a former 16th-century Tudor estate, Greenway Court, with the elegant stuccoed house. There are still the remnants of a Tudor courtyard underneath the current house's hallway. Roop gave his very best to the building project because he went bankrupt afterward. He had to sell the home to a Bristol merchant, Edward Elton, for nearly $11,000. When Edward Elton died in 1811, his son James Elton inherited and expanded the house. The original mansion looked different from its modern version, two wings flanking the central structure with the dining and drawing rooms. A billiard room and more bedrooms were added to the initial design. The Elton family also designed the romantic woodland garden with the help of the landscape gardener Humphrey Repton. In 1832, James Elton sold the estate. The home had switched several owners before Agatha Christie moved there with her husband, the archaeologist Max Mallowan, in 1938. By that time, they had been married for almost a decade. Agatha knew Greenway from her childhood. She grew up in nearby Torquay. Torquay had significantly developed in the previous years, which didn't fascinate Christie the magnificent sea view from her Torquay house became obstructed by new buildings. Agatha looked for another house nearby and discovered that Greenway was available. During her youth, she had noticed this property and recalled it as the most perfect of the various properties on the Dart. Soon after her relocation, Agatha had the Victorian part removed. According to Laura Cooper, collections and house officer of Greenway, she didn't need a billiard room or extra bedrooms. The estate appeared relaxed and atmospheric, and Agatha seemed satisfied with the purchase. She wrote in her later autobiography, One day we saw that a house was up for sale that I had known when I was young. So we went over to Greenway, and very beautiful the house and grounds were. The Greenway estate, with its 36 acres of land, contained a tennis court, where Max Mallowan planted a stunning Magnolia Campbelli in 1938, a kitchen garden, a vinery, a bird pond with sculpture, and a Reptonian-style driveway laid in the 1820s. The walled garden was magnificent, with extensive woodland drifting down the hillside towards the Dart estuary. Now, there is a restored peach house and vineyard, as well as an allotment cared for by local school children. The gardens feature a Cornish influence, planted with camellias, magnolias, laurels, and rhododendrons. Christie loved to spend hours on the green lawns, playing clock golf and croquet. The Greenway Boathouse from late Georgian or early Victorian times is often referred to as Raleigh's Boathouse. 
the home interiors are richly decorated with a valuable collection of European and Oriental ceramics. Tunbridge ware, silver, studio pottery, paper mache, straw ware boxes, and books. The family were great collectors. The first editions of Christie's novels are also displayed there. Some pieces were brought to Greenway from her childhood home. Others were bought on travels from auction sales or local artists. The family appreciated Stephen Graff's or pictures woven from silk, paintings, manuscripts, African tribal artifacts, and Malachite writing implements. A historic Georgian foyer welcomes visitors with an eclectic mix of woodwork and worldly artifacts. There are takia or caps from Africa and Egyptian fly whisks, tools used to drive off bothersome flies in summer. The entrance hall also features a cupboard from Zanzibar, some studio pottery, and a pewter skull. The morning room contains several of Christie's portraits as a child and her doll, Rosie. The main staircase is still in fabulous condition. Numerous paintings adorn the walls along the stairs. The drawing room is stuffed with antique items from Christie's childhood home. In the corner stands a Steinway piano. Although a concert-level pianist, Christie is believed to have been too shy to play the musical instrument. The family gathered in the drawing room as Agatha read aloud the latest chapter of her mystery novels. Everyone tried to guess what had happened. This lovely tradition hints at the support the novelist constantly received from her family. The kitchen originally was a butler's pantry and a cook's kitchen. It is still equipped with mid-20th century appliances. The room features a traditional stone floor and range cooker. An impressive collection of pottery is beautifully displayed along the wall. Agatha knew how to prepare meals and write the recipes in her books. Her soft spot was Devonshire cream. Even her Miss Marple has this tiny gastronomic obsession. According to Christie's grandson Matthew, Agatha used to drink cream from a huge cape with a Don't Be Greedy inscription, but she never showed any sign of paying attention to this message. The library has a vast collection of books. The amazing frieze painting near the ceiling and the cozy navy blue chairs and a sofa. The dining room was a place where the entire family could gather for dinner and celebration. As we already know, Christy had a huge passion for food, so she treated her guests generously. The dining room is also adorned with lovely artifacts, such as an amazing double-humped camel pottery Max Mallowan had purchased from China. The inner hall's design is enriched with marvelous tapestries, trinket boxes, ornaments, and carpets. The sitting room contains objects acquired from Max's numerous archaeological digs. The light and airy bedroom with 1950s furniture offers incredible views over the River Dart and gardens. Agatha's bedroom still looks the way it was, with her bags packed and ready for departure, and some of her clothing neatly hanging in the dressing room. This creates the illusion that the queen of the crime can enter the room at any moment. Her camp cot stands in the corner of the bedroom. Sometimes, Agatha accompanied her husband on archaeological excavations in the Middle East, so you'll also find archaeological artifacts at her home. The novelist laughed. I married an archaeologist because the older I grow, the more he appreciates me. In Damascus, Syria, Agatha purchased a catching mother-of-pearl inlaid chest which she described as the sort of furniture that reminds one of fairyland. The handcrafted chest proudly rests in the bedroom. It is very heavy, so the family didn't move it around the house. The cost of the item delivery exceeded its initial price. There's an interesting story behind the Damascus chest. For several nights, Agatha kept waking up, 
being bothered by odd tapping and ticking noises. That was a real mystery that life had asked her to solve. Agatha switched on her deductive capabilities. One night followed another, but the noises continued. Christy didn't give up. Eventually, she realized the culprit was a woodworm in the chest. Among other home treasures is the world's second mobile phone. Anthony Hicks, Christie's son-in-law, purchased the phone for use while working in the gardens. Agatha Christie spent many happy years with her family at Greenway. She often gathered the family to celebrate the release of her latest book. They played croquet and clock golf, relaxed by the river, and the writer read her latest mystery to guests. Agatha referred to Greenway House as the loveliest place on earth. For over 40 years, the family spent summers, celebrated Christmases, and held family parties there. Agatha perceived Greenway House as a place for relaxation, so she didn't write there. The novelist worked when she was in London and even in hotels. However, it doesn't mean Greenway no played role in her professional career. The estate actually inspired her best-selling books, including Dead Man's Folly, 1956. This Poirot detective story was later filmed there. The crime scene in the story took place in the Boathouse, a tourist attraction nowadays. The mansion and surroundings often appear in Christie's novels. For example, in Five Little Pigs, 1942, Christie used the footpath leading from the main house to the battery overlooking the River Dart as a background for the inevitable murder. In Toward Zero, 1944, the river was where a suspect disappeared each night for a swim. The Christie and Malouin duo lived in Greenway House until they died in 1976 and 1978, respectively. Agatha's daughter, Rosalind Hicks, also lived there with her husband, Anthony, from 1968 until she died in 2004. Now, the National Trust takes care of the estate, as Rosalind Hicks donated the house to them. The estate he was restored in several years. It is open to visitors most of the year, except for the winter months when the National Trust's team of conservators checks the home's condition, cleans, and packs away the valuable collectibles. Even if you manage to visit Greenway House, it doesn't guarantee the house will let you go back. Sometimes, curiosity plays a trick on people. For instance, over 100 tourists got trapped for several hours in Agatha Christie's former home in 2023. Stormy weather knocked down a tree, blocking the single-track road leading down to the estate. Visitors, staff, and volunteers were left stranded. However, the tourists didn't turn up their noses. They drank cups of tea in the tea room and played rounds of croquet on the lawn, just like Christie did. They had enough time to explore the walled gardens and observe the crime scene in Dead Man's Folly. The atmosphere seemed calm, but it was Christie's house after all. Remember her 1939 iconic novel, And Then There Were None? Ten Strangers trapped in a remote mansion, killed one by one. The parallel was obvious. Despite such omen predictions, tourists avoided the fate of Christie's characters. Local rescue services reopened the road, and people left the estate that very evening, all safe and sound. As you can see, Agatha Christie Greenway House has a playful character, reflecting both unique tastes and the extraordinary mind of Agatha Christie and her husband, Max Mallowan. So, crime fiction fans, would you dare to visit it after the 2023 incident? Which detail in today's review impressed you the most? Please share your thoughts with us 